folks. And I was I was talking about how much I love seeing collaborations. Our next school or schools is, I think, a good example of that as well. This is a trio of schools in the eastern part of the county. We've got a project that was in collaboration between Harvey Mudd College and Pomona College, um, both located in Claremont, as well as Cal Poly Pomona. And their project is called Zeroing In on Solar. So uh, the project was led by Harvey Mudd Professor Richard Haskell. Uh, and the schools are developing a strategic plan to place nonprofit solar panel factories across LA County, targeting its most underserved communities. So that sounds like a really big vision with a big promise as well. Um, and presenting today for the trio will be a student, uh, Jackson Castro. So Jackson, I will toss the baton over to you to take it away. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I just wanna say we're really happy to be here. We have most of our team here with us today, at least the Harvey Mudd team. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, as, as it was said pretty well, this is a bit of an ambitious project and we all kind of came into it knowing that we weren't gonna fully solve Terp's problem, but we wanted to help make as much progress as we could on that while we had the opportunity this semester. And overall, we feel really good about what we were able to get done. We were able to provide a lot of data and a lot of support to groups and areas across LA County as we try to create more of these factories that kind of uplift these communities. And on that note, we actually have a video prepared. So I will go ahead and play that and then we can move into the questions. So what drew you to this project? In college, we spend four years um, discussing climate change, the negative impacts on the environment, on society, and on everyone around us. And this project is kind of the first opportunity that I've had to really focus on both of those social and environmental issues at the same time, and really work to not only bring renewable energy to communities in a concrete, sustainable way that's really um, proven to be very effective, but also in a way that directly benefits communities and those who will most need that help when climate change becomes much more prevalent in society. Um, I've been really lucky to be a part of this project, and I think that the interdisciplinary side of it really makes this a standout um, project for me. CHIRP, the Community Home Energy Revolution Project, began as an organization focused on retrofitting homes in the Claremont area to make them more energy efficient and environmentally friendly. Now, they've launched an initiative known as Factories for the Future, which aims to redefine the solar manufacturing process across the United States. CHIRP aims to build solar micro factories that will be sponsored by different nonprofit organizations in underserved areas that have borne the brunt of environmental injustice. By bringing manufacturing back to these areas, CHIRP will also be providing local jobs and revitalizing economies in these communities. Through this mixed non- and for-profit model, these factories will be able to provide approximately 6,000 local low- and middle-income community members with solar panels per year. Just earlier this year, CHIRP opened its prototype factory in Pomona, which they will be sponsoring themselves as a proof of concept. Once certification for production is complete, CHIRP will begin rolling out the cutting-edge ideal PV panels that eliminate hotspots, the last major hazard for silicon solar panels. One of the reasons this project is so exciting for us as students is because we get to use the knowledge that we've gained in our computer science courses and our physics courses and kind of conglomerate all of this into a way to bring these new factories to communities that really need them. And it's really just so exciting because these factories benefit these communities in several different ways. One, it's great that we're bringing all of this solar energy to communities that otherwise might not be able to afford it. But on top of that, the factories are meant to work in a way that training is easy so that local community members can be the ones who are manning the factory and making these panels, doing the manufacturing themselves, rather than having panels that are made overseas. Because in this case, to buy those panels, you're losing money from the community. Whereas in this case, in the CHIRP model, the money is being reinvested back in these communities that need it the most, that need access to these, these renewable energy sources, that need 
help and a break in some of the energy costs that they would otherwise be expending and help right some of the environmental injustice that's been done in these communities to kind of bring everyone together and bring the renewable energy transition across the board, not just to those who are wealthy enough to afford it. To help showcase this effort, CHIRP brought on help from local collegiate teams at Harvey Mudd, Pomona, and Cal Poly Pomona to focus on the expansion of factories within LA County. LA County was not only chosen since all three colleges as well as CHIRP reside there, but because it also has the most ambitious sustainability plan in the nation. Specifically, CHIRP's microfactory model would tackle Goal 7A, bringing 10 gigawatts of new distributed energy sources to LA County by 2045. This would equate to about 30 million new solar modules in this time. If we continue to buy most of our panels overseas where they are currently manufactured, this would result in $5 billion that would leave LA County. However, through CHIRP's model, this $5 billion could be reinvested right here at home, and all of this can be achieved if around 15 factories can be built in the county's most vulnerable communities. The energy produced by panels from just one of these factories can pull tens of thousands of metric tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere every year. And on top of that, the panels help reinvest millions of dollars into the economies in these underserved communities. Thanks to the energy savings, residents who receive the free panel installation will collectively see approximately six and a half million dollars more in disposable personal income. When we look at the effect that 15 of these factories would have in the county, the numbers are only more impressive, jumping into the hundreds of thousands of metric tons of CO2 removed, billions of dollars reinvested, and almost 100 million more in DPI across these communities. Our first objective in helping start more of these factories was to first figure out what communities it was best to locate them in. CHIRP already had some connections in various communities across LA County, but we wanted to help provide them with hard evidence that could be presented in favor of building a factory to local leadership. This led us to the creation of a GIS map after congregating data from several different sources. Ultimately, our chosen criteria were separated into three tiers of importance. The lowest tier contains various environmental injustice metrics predominantly focused on pollution. The middle tier contains mostly demographic groups that the presence of a factory would most benefit, such as high school completion rate and linguistic isolation. In the top tier are metrics that the presence of a factory would help alleviate, such as energy burden and unemployment rate. The tiers are roughly arranged into a ratio of importance of one to two to three. When taking these weights into account and combining the data into an overall score, this produced an interactive GIS map with our areas of most concern showing up in the warmer colors. This allowed us to provide further evidence for communities that were already interested in a factory and also locate potential sites that should be reached out to in order to start the process of building and sponsoring a factory of their own. Our final task was to split into smaller groups and focus on four specific sites in order to further the creation of factories in these communities. We chose one site for each of the supervisorial districts. Compton, Panorama City, Long Beach, and Lancaster, with the Pomona site already being in District 1. Each of our groups has spent the final part of the semester attempting to establish what CHIRP refers to as a core energy group at these sites. Core energy groups are a collection of individuals that are spearheading the process of bringing a factory to their community with a range of backgrounds. Local government, those with previous nonprofit work, community outreach, local artists, environmental crashes over and over again development and more our teams have started reaching out to all these types of people over the last month building connections and furthering the conversation of bringing a factory to these sites currently we already have several community members interested in the project in compton and we're looking to bring in more soon in panorama city we have had conversations with the environmental office of supervisor kewell with the hopes of then keeping the conversation going when supervisor horvath steps in in Long Beach, the beginnings of a group was already established, but we have begun to help them seek more members as well as start to submit grant applications for funding. In Lancaster, we have begun conversations and started connecting to community services in order to get in contact with other groups in the area who would be interested in the project. This project here in LA County is only the beginning. CHIRP's plan would ultimately connect factories sponsored by different nonprofits nationwide in what they call the Locally Grown Power Network. Already, there are core energy groups established in 11 different states, and the prototype factory hasn't even begun production yet. The Factories for the Future initiative will change the way that solar energy is looked at in the U.S., 
from the return of manufacturing to our soil to the economic aid to communities most affected by climate change. CHIRP presents novel solutions to major issues facing our country today and has been an amazing experience to be a part of it. All right. Wonderful work, team. Beautiful video. Thank you so much for sharing so many great, you know, exciting ideas about this project. It's really holistic solution as well. I'm really excited to see what our panelists think and throw it their way to, to ask you a question. Uh, so let's see, maybe this time we start with LaRonda. Do you have a question for the team? Um, I thought that was a wonderful presentation and the idea of integrating the economic uh, needs, because if you're, if you're picking sites, you know, Compton and different places where their lower income people are, are plentiful, they're getting trained for a new industry and they're able to produce something that will benefit everybody. I think that's what in my world and in my life, I wanna see more of come out of our, our universities and come out of collaborations between the people that are providing the social services and the people who are looking forward and ahead and figuring out together how we can make something that sustainable and workable and long-term has a life. So I don't have any questions for you other than to encourage you to keep in the direction you're going and to wish you success in every aspect of it. If I can help you, let me know, but I think you're on the right path already. That's it. That's Thank wonderful. You. Thank you, LaRonda. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Mary Beth, how about we throw it to you and then we'll end with Chris. Sure. Um, I think it's a wonderful project, and I love the idea that it's designed to be located in the areas of most need in terms of economic stimulation and, and uh, jobs, etc. I My question is, what what's the capital need behind this project, and where do you expect that's going to come from? <clears throat> yeah, of course, and I can speak to that a little bit as well as we have um, our CHIRP liaison, Megan Anderson here. Um, but the way that the model kind of works is that the funding is individual to each factory site with some potential oversight and help um, by CHIRP. But the idea is that each individual factory is sponsored by a nonprofit who can accrue enough funding to get the factory started and running. And I'll have Megan correct me if I'm wrong, but the estimated number per factory is around a startup of 6 million, more or less, um, with some potential uh, leeway in some areas. But, and some of the sites that were mentioned are already, already kind of working on securing more funding. Long Beach is the one that comes to mind, um, at least of the ones that we worked within. And they're looking at, both governmental funding, um, some funds from grants across LA County, nationally, just kind of wherever you can get it. And that's that's more or less how the system works. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, let's throw it to you. Yeah, really quickly, this is really great. You know, I appreciate, um, you know, the, the intent here of uh, growing uh, a solar, uh, manufacturing ecosystem here in Los Angeles, and um, you know my my comments and um, or my statements are, are really just cautionary tales, and I have um, a few of them in the interest of time. Uh, I'll be very succinct. The first one is, you know, uh, while manufacturing is a good idea, you know, um, much of the benefits uh, of, of these systems really. Uh, could be maintained uh, if they're properly, if there's a maintenance and operations program. So maybe a reconsideration of maybe not just manufacturing, but offering a turnkey solution you know, and, and, and moving in that direction, you know, um, um, you know uh, for uh, essentially maintaining the benefits. Um, uh, another one could be uh, for consideration that you could consider as well as, you know, the trade-offs associated with you know, having these kinds of technologies, the more solar we have uh, across the, the region, you know, uh, the less um, available space those particular locations might have. 
you know, unless they're on rooftops to begin with, you know, um, and, um, you know, the consequences of uh, over 20, 30 years of using solar, where do all these things go at the end of life, you know, uh, something that um, you might want to think about as well. Uh, and, and the third one is, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, maybe this is a gateway for other opportunities, you know, uh, in, in, in communities that uh, you're thinking about and having these manufacturing uh, firms, uh, maybe there's an ancillary sets of businesses, you know, uh, that could grow, you know, out of these, um, you know, as you develop the project, considering those uh, other ancillary businesses uh, associated with the project. Yeah, and I'm curious, you know, I know that those are kind of cautionary tales, but but I would love to hear any response from the team on those, you know, because because some of those I think are are positioned as really strong questions to to maybe try to answer already, actually. Yeah, and I think thank you so much for for your um, your comments, and I think I can speak to at least a couple of those. The end of life is a, a very important thing that will need to be take into account once more of these factories are up and running. Um, speaking to your, your second point on the kind of space and the availability, um, the intention is largely that these are going to be in urban areas. The intent is to put them on rooftops. Um, the idea would be that this you would, each factory would be able to create contracts with major kind of staple uh, community buildings like government buildings, ISDs, um, stuff like that. And you'll be able to have those contracts through there that would then be able to fund the panels that would be put on low income housing to relieve their energy burden. Um, so the idea is these are more focused on these individual communities in that sense. It's not to produce panels for large arrays in, in most most positions, but larger, say, like parking lot cover type arrays are also feasible. Oh, oh. Think about our de retrofits to existing infrastructure, you know, um, as well. Just want to put that in. I could, I could make a quick comment too. Um, Chris, uh, your, your comment about being vertically integrated is, is exactly what we're doing. Um, what we're trying to do is locate uh, the means of production and the entire value chain inside the local city. So we start with the factory, uh, create the jobs there. We add the installation and the jobs there, the operations and maintenance, and then ultimately even the financing can come locally. So that what we've done now is we've relocated the entire value chain uh, inside a local community owned and operated by the local nonprofit so that then the profits also stay local and get recirculated back into community solar projects, especially now working in California through the community choice aggregation um, organizations. Uh, the cities, uh, there's like over 35 of them now in LA County alone. So we can create community solar projects and direct the benefits uh, directly to low-income households, uh, skipping the rooftops. So yeah, that that is the ultimate goal: is to uh, significantly um, alter the distribution of a vital resource and locate the entire locus of control uh, inside the local hyperlocal uh, community. That's great. Thank you, Devin. And thank you, panelists and team. That was wonderful.